Activism has been his life, fighting varied causes for human rights through civil society activism, fighting corruption, fighting for assets recovery, fighting for African and poor nations' debt cancellation, fighting for close monitoring of government budgets, fighting for oil revenue applications in the Niger Delta, fighting for portable water provision, fighting for fiscal responsibility and accountability, and even fighting for his life in the face of injustice. That has been your life, Reverend David Ugolo. Our circumstances and environment of birth, as well as DNA circumscribe our lives. Born in Otefe, Uara Delta State, on February 2nd, 1970, and raised in Ulubu and Igbo Bazua in Edo State, Growing up, David Ugolo has always opposed exploitation of persons, despoilation of the environment and public resources. Examples abound. On several occasions, even as a 20-year-old young man, he led non-violent peaceful protests against environmental degradation of Okumu Forest, then owned by Bendel State Government and agro-allied multinational companies. He would air his views in the early 1990s in the Nigerian Observer. Sustaining his zeal and passion for humanity while studying for his first degree in agricultural economics and extension in the present AAU Ekboma, then Edo State University, he bethered his NGO in ANIJ, Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice. In that role, he traversed Africa and the world working in the late 1990s in the Jubilee 2000 campaign, collaborating with other NGOs across the world in the fight for the cancellation of third world debts. When the Jubilee movement broke into North and South, he in conjunction with 35 countries in Africa, the Pacific, Latin America and Caribbean countries, set up the Jubilee South South Forum. Their focus how to overcome the effects and consequences of debt-related domination in the lives and futures of third world peoples. The end game was for the total repudiation of all third world external debts through collective action. With the Nigeria Jubilee movement operating from Lagos, Reverend Ugolo's NGO voice was strident in the area of debt cancellation and third world underdevelopment. The movement was suspicious, as it was the time President Olusegun Obasanjo was seeking Nigeria's exit from the Parry Club debt in 2005. Reverend David Ugolo was thus well equipped and knowledgeable to play in the Parry Club debt debate. Anij and 60 other civil society organizations opposed any debt repayment, as they felt Nigeria's debt profile of $35 billion owed the Parry Club as being too high. For Reverend David Ugolo, reshedling, which the creditors seemed to favor, was not it. The posture of Reverend Ugolo and his colleagues on the Parry Club debt issue showed them as patriots and global citizens, fighting over debt-induced poverty in third world countries. The pressure paid off. Nigeria's debt profile was scaled down first to $19 billion then to $17 billion. Nigeria then agreed to pay $12 billion, with $5 billion forgiven. Yes, Reverend David Ugolo and his colleagues did not win either repudiation or outright cancellation, but they deserve applause for their commitment to human values of justice, equity, and sustainable economic development. Two months after Nigeria exited the Paris Club debt peonage, Reverend David Ugolo was again at the rampart in the campaign on Nigeria's decision to exit London club debt of $2.15 billion. Reverend Ugolo was up in arms in protest against Obasanjo's plan to repay the obnoxious London club debt. Instead, he cautioned, like so many wise economists then, that priorities should be given to domestic debt payments and infrastructural outlays as these will move and alleviate poverty in Nigeria, partly induced by the burden of illegitimate international debts. Under the watch of Reverend David Ugolo, 
and he just led the campaign for the repatriation of stolen assets by Nigerian leaders and politically exposed persons, a move that could help to finance development in Nigeria. In a campaign launched in 1996 at Jregwe, Benin Republic, at a workshop organized by Anij, marked the commencement and the beginning of the campaign for the return of looted assets to their countries of origin, knowing that much of Africa's resources have been looted and stashed in secret jurisdictions and vaults of northern countries' banks. The asset recovery campaign model of Anij has now gone global, with the World Bank setting up the Stolen Assets Recovery Initiative and the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Only recently, from December 4th to 8th, 2017, Reverend David Ugolo led Nigeria Civil Society to the Global Forum on Asset Recovery, GFAR Summit, held in Washington, D.C., USA, where the Nigerian government and the Swiss government sealed an MOU on the repatriation of yet another $321 million. Returning to Nigeria, plans have been perfected on the use of that quantum of money for the National Social Investment Program of the present federal government. Reverend David Ugolo believes in his cause of the people of the oil-rich Niger Delta. Hence, he launched various initiatives to reverse the oil curse and poor governance in the Niger Delta. One of the initiatives is the monitoring of the revenue flow in the nine Niger Delta states. The initial baseline study revealed that oil revenue was not a blessing, but a curse. Hence, the aggressiveness and the high level of economic sabotage of oil facilities. From a humble start in 2003, the monitoring project has metamorphosed into an encompassing Niger Delta budget monitoring and transparency network. The Edo State Chapter was established in November 2006 at the NUJ Press Center in the presence of 35 civil society organizations. Driving the process further, Reverend Ogolo used the platform of Fanij to see to the setting up of oil and gas commissions like Desopadek, a Dosok Padek. Not leaving things on their oars, Reverend David Ugolo set the agenda for the annual monitoring of the commissions in their first year. A consultant was recruited. His goal to curtail the looting of public resources with a consequent deepening of poverty and lack of development. The outcome of that exercise, in conjunction with Light Africa, a worry based NGO, a Citizens Report cartoon was developed. It was in addition to monitor the operations of Niger Delta interventionist institutions like NNDC, Federal Minister of Niger Delta, and the State Oil and Gas Commissions. Flashing the Citizens Report card before the then acting president, Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, at a public forum in Benin, contractors who had collected mobilization fees and abandoned projects were also returned to site or face prosecution. Glad to say, many of those jobs have either been completed or reached advanced stages of completion. The Citizens Report Card 2 has since gone digital through the Dyntra platform, the first time it is in use in Africa as an online platform to be used to evaluate and rank all NDI. The success story of the use of the Dyntra platform was exhibited as a niche was selected among over 35 NGOs to make a presentation at Civicus, a global society forum, which held in Fiji, Southwest Pacific, from December 4th to the 8th, 2017.